Okay. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Wealth in Christ Podcast, a show where we encourage people to find spiritually and financial balance in their life through the abundance grace of God. On our podcast today, we have Miss Esther Adewumi. She's a gospel artist. Her most recent single is Yin Baba. It's available on YouTube, Apple Music, and everywhere you listen to music. Today, we're going to discuss her journey so far as an artist. So thank you, Ms. Esther, for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. We bless God. <clears throat> we thank God for another day. You know, with all this stuff that's happening in the world, you just got to be happy every day, to be honest. <laughs> that's so, that's so, so, yeah. So what inspired you to be a gospel artist? What inspired me? Um, I would say I just love music. Um, my dad actually has some albums before he left Nigeria. So music, he just embedded it in, our, in us. It's five of us. We all play instruments. Um, all my brothers play instruments. Me and my sister sing. Um, so <laughs> every day during morning devotion, we sing praise and worship. <laughs> I guess that's the beginning of it. And then my dad's a pastor too. Um, so yeah, that's how I, I was basically born into music. I would say that. Yeah. What age did you start singing? Well, my first solo was when I was nine years old. Um, the children church that I the church that I was attending, I used to attend Redeem. So the church I was attending, um, they had like a audition to sing this song in the main sanctuary. So I was really shy. I know. I think that was like my first experience. I was so nervous, um, but I auditioned, not thinking that I would get the, you know, the solo part, and I did. And even <laughs> the day of the administration, I was so nervous, like sweating and everything. I still kind of get nervous sometimes when I sing, but I would say um, worship has become a lifestyle. So anytime I'm about to grab that mic, you know, I just picture it's just me in my room <laughs> singing to God, you know. So yeah. Oh, man, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so how has faith played a role for you so far in the journey? Um, faith plays the, the role, the only role, especially as a, a music minister. You know, um, you have to make sure that, you know, privately, you know, you're a worshiper. You know, you can't get on stage and do what you don't do privately. I mean, some people do it, but... Um, personally, I don't want to get on stage and not do what I do privately. Um, just so my worship can be accepted by the one I'm worshiping, you know, not by the people that's listening. So faith is everything. Um, I know back then, you know, when I wasn't, when I knew I wasn't right with God, my ministration was different. I couldn't worship freely. I couldn't. And, and as a minister, your point, your goal is to reach people. And that's a spiritual assignment. So you have to be spiritually up there for you to, you know, achieve a spiritual assignment. So that's how I see it. That's definitely dope. So being, being as said, would you, um, how important is consistency? You're talking about, you know, some people, you know, they, they're not the same way in person, whether when they're on stage. So how important is you being consistent, whether you're on stage or not? It's important because um, the person I'm worshiping is God and he's there whether I'm on stage or whether I'm not on stage. So if I feel like maybe I don't do something when I'm not on stage, but I try to do it on stage, I'm not fooling anyone. Um, the people sitting in the audience, they may be fooled, but I'm not, I'm not singing because of them. The ultimate father who is Jesus Christ, who sees you even when you're in darkness, he sees you even when you're in light, he sees you everywhere. You know, so why would I try to, since I can't deceive Jesus who I'm singing to, you know, the point is, you know, why would I try to deceive others when Jesus is my main focus? So I know he sees me all the time. So consistency is pretty, pretty important. Well, how do you go about creating a song? Like, how, like, what are the steps, you know, between the title, lyrics, how did that uh... Okay, the, the steps for me is, um, okay, I actually just changed the way I write music. 
So which one do you want to hear? The old step or the new step? We can hear both. We can hear both. <laughs> okay, so my older step, um, usually what I'll do is um, maybe someone like a producer or something will reach out to me that they have a really nice beat, you know, or instrumental that they want me to sing to, and then they'll send it. And I'll just keep replaying it, keep replaying it, probably hear it like 20 times. And then um, I'll just start singing. Um, when I find when I find a melody that I love, like a tune, you know, I'll save it and then I'll add lyrics to it. So that's what I used to do. Um, what I do now is, um, I would say right now, I the music that I do is inspired by the Holy Spirit because um, let me just confess, I don't really, I didn't really have time. I don't really have time for music right now. You know, being that. Um, you know, like I told you earlier, I just finished medical school. So I'm studying for my board exam and I'm working and I'm planning, um, for my wedding. Actually, I'm getting married in October. Okay. Thank you. So it's like, um, I don't have time for music, but these days when I get inspiration by the Holy Spirit, let's say, okay, the song, Yibaba, I was asleep and that was a, that, the tune like the chorus I heard it in my sleep so I woke up and I took that chorus and then I added you know my own verse I sent that chorus to the producer and then he made a beat based on what I sent to him and then I added lyrics accordingly like the first verse the second verse but the chorus came literally in in the dream so I mean that's how I've been operating lately so yeah and I really love it <laughs> You know, I really, really love it because the songs, I mean, I have an album that I've, that I just completed. I went to Nigeria and everything to, um, to produce it, shot music, music videos and everything, but I haven't released it yet. Um, but that album is fire literally because most of my lyrics, it was either I was in church randomly and I was, I would just start singing and I'd be like, wow, that's beautiful. And I'll just take my phone and record it while I'm singing, you know, so or in, a, or in a dream or while I'm sleeping, you know, it's just, they all come from different places. So that album is actually amazing and I can't wait to bring it out. That's good. Um, so with you with different hats, you know, your medical student, your medical doctor, um, your wife to be, where does music now come for you? Is it the priority or do you, you know? Music is a priority, but um, I would say, I think it's easier to do music because it's a lifestyle. Um, it's not something I'm doing to make money or to gain recognition. Um, I know before, maybe like five, six, seven years ago, when I first released my first single, you know, my motives were different, you know, but now, <laughs> I mean, my music is a ministry. You know, I want to reach people, even if a hundred people don't hear it, but maybe one person in their room heard it and it ministered to them, you know, that's okay for me. So I would say now it's just like a lifestyle. Um, it's just what I do to even reach just one person, you know, so it's still a priority. Um, I literally, I, I minister at different places, maybe um, three times a week. So it's still pretty much, you know, a priority. I still do it. Um, uh, how would you inspire uh, upcoming you know, interested in you know, creating gospel music? What did you say? I said, how would you inspire or encourage those who want to be a gospel artist or gospel instrumentalist? You know, a lot of times we get so caught up in trying to make money that they leave God out of it. So how would you encourage Want to still stay focused on God and not so worry about so much about the money. Um, the way you can stay focused on God is making sure that you know God personally. Um, I think that plays a big role in it, and also your mindset. Um, I mean, just knowing that you're not doing it for money, but knowing that literally you're doing God's work. Gospel music is supposed to be an, a source of evangelism. It's supposed to be a source where you reach people and that should be the goal, not, you know, making funds or making money. If you want to make money from it, to be honest, you can go and play, you know, with the 
um, you can go and play worldly music or whatever, and you'll make money. But when it comes to gospel, don't make making money your priority because like the Bible says, money is the root of all evil. So once money is that priority, you've lost it, you know, like, but I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you can't make good money from gospel music. You know, people do, people make good money. And if God blesses me by, you know, later on, and I'm making a lot of my funds from, you know, gospel music or people buying my CD and things like that, you know, praise God. But don't come into it with the mindset that oh, I want to make billions from this. This That's all I want to do is make money because making money shouldn't be the priority. The priority should be um, Jesus and um, lifting his name up and ministering to souls. Okay, so how do you stay encouraged? Um, I stay encouraged. I know I keep saying it, but the word of God. <laughs> Um, I say encouraged by the word of God and um, just I have things going on for myself other than music you know like I'm I have a degree I'm trying to reach I have um, I'm working you know they, there's a lot of pastors that they don't even get paid for being pastors you know they still have work of their hand so I feel like you know I'm not thank God I'm not struggling or anything like that he's been providing so that literally encourages me um yeah, another thing that encourages me is when I when I hear testimonies, you know, of people that heard my song. I remember when Yiba Back came out and um, someone messaged me and was like, they were planning on committing suicide because there's been so much going on with them. You know, but when they heard the song, um, you know, they just automatically started thinking about things that God has done for for them. Yiba Back means praise God. So when they, when they sent me that, like I was in tears, but that pushed me. You know what I mean? Like for me to be able to speak to someone's mind, you know, to change their mind when they're going through a hard time, that meant so, so much to me. So I know <laughs> I always think about that instance and I, it keeps me going, you know, it keeps me going. So, yeah. Cool. And I guess I'll leave you with my next question. How do you manage finance as being an independent artist? I know that could be tough, but how do you manage? Finance? Well, um music is expensive you know studio time is expensive paying backup singers paying instrumentalists is all expensive um and maybe that's why I don't um release songs as often as I should I literally wait till I have something worthwhile like <laughs> like you baba I when I woke up I was like oh I need to call my producer and you know I use my personal funds for it you know so I just, I, I move accordingly and, oh, and people bless me too. Like, um, I remember there was a song I went to do in Nigeria, the video, Choose to Worship. And um, um, there was this president's wife that was at a program I went to sing at. So when she heard the song, she really loved it. And, you know, she decided to donate a huge amount. Um, and I was like so happy because... I mean, I think that was the first time anyone has ever, you know, donated to my music. And it was a really huge amount. And I was able to use it to shoot the video while I was in Nigeria. So, yeah, finances, I mean, finances is nothing. I just believe, um, you know, Jesus, he owns all the cattle in the hill. So he owns everything in this world. So if I need anything done concerning my music, which is his ministry, you know, which is raising him up, I always believe that he's going to you know, open a way or provide a way. So what is the biggest challenge you ever faced as a gospel artist? What is the biggest challenge? Ooh, the biggest challenge I've ever faced, um, I would say maybe other gospel artists not taking it the way I take it I mean okay like for instance if I want to go and minister somewhere I don't charge especially churches I don't charge churches I I like I've driven to New York before to minister I use my own gas and all that and they didn't give me a love offering and I didn't get upset you know because I went there to do what I had to do you know some people would get upset at that but I remember when I wanted to have a concert um to reach out to help the homeless you know, to raise funds. And it was just so hard getting other gospel artists, up, you know, on board without them overcharging 
you know, they wanted to charge 600, a thousand, you know, like big money. I'm like, um, I can take that thousand and give it, to, you know, and give it to the homeless, what I'm actually trying to achieve, yeah. you know? So I think that's like the biggest challenge. Um, and instruments are expensive. They're really expensive. So that's the challenge. But like I said, God literally always makes a way. And he always, he's even brought a whole band to me before to volunteer to, you know, to minister with me for free. So, you know, God always makes a way. So, yeah. With the, with, with the um, I won't say competition, but I guess how other God is, you know, take the way you approach um, this journey. Does that make you feel any type of way? I knew you should change, I knew you should charge. That's something personally that you chose not to do. Um, no, no, no. It was something personal I chose not to do. Um, the Holy Spirit actually told, you know, told me, um, convicted me that it's not right for me in particular to charge churches. And I don't hold that against any gospel artists. I mean, what everyone's conviction is different. Yeah. You know, so yeah. That, that, that's quite interesting. Do you have any favorite gospel artists? Um, right now, I love Pastor Duncy. Um, who else? I love Rukola Becks. Um, do you know her? Yes, I do. Yes, I okay. do. Okay. Yeah, I love Rukola Becks. I love how she praises. Um, yeah, those are my two favorite. Oh, Nathaniel Bassey, of course, but no, he's always been my favorite. <laughs> but yeah. That's good. As a young kid, did you always see yourself becoming a gospel artist, or is just it's, as a young kid, did you always see yourself becoming a gospel artist? Oh gospel yeah. Mhm. Mm I did. Um. I just always saw myself being used in the house of God, um, or in the presence of God, even if it takes me outside of the house of God. Um. And I feel like music is a great platform. So I already love it. I already have a passion for it. And when I hold that mic, I have a chance to, to speak and to evangelize and to actually minister. You know, so I've always seen myself doing music. I've always, and that's never going to change. I'll probably be 120 years old still <laughs> singing that program. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess to wrap it up, where, what can people expect from you, you know, coming up because, you know, I want new music in the future. You know, I say you work on a new album, so. Mm -hmm. um, well, my new album should be coming out this year. I would say later this year or early next year. Um, I'm working on it. But um, just look out. Look out. The album is going to be amazing. And then I should have a music video dropping soon. Okay. Yeah, so. That's yeah. the album or that's a different song? Well, the music video is from the album. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the is one of the songs from the album. All right, so my last, yeah. If someone wanted to become a gospel artist, how would you advise them to go about becoming a gospel artist? Um. Well, the first thing you need to do is have a song. Um. Okay, let me tell you what I did. The first thing I did was I had my song ready. I hit up the producer. You know, they, they made the beat. I went into the studio, recorded the song. After that, I made a flyer. You know, because you're just starting, you should make a flyer. Um, you can post it on social media handles um, or whatever. Post the song on YouTube. Just let people know where to find the song. And that's literally how you begin. And after that, just be consistent. You know, release more songs and things like that. Literally, is that easy? Uh, how important is consistency? Um, well, if you're just starting up, I would advise you, you know, if you're not releasing songs and you're just starting up, people might forget about you. Okay, let's say you want to think about worship music right now. You're going to think about Nathaniel Bassey because he has a lot of songs out. You know, he kept releasing songs back to back to back, you know, um, and he was consistent. So, People, so if anybody want to think about a worship song, oh, you know, they're going to think about someone that's consistent. Let's say someone released a song 10 years ago. 
if I'm thinking about worship music now, even though I love their song, I'm not going to think about their song because they haven't released a song in such a long time. So, um, yeah, so I would say, you know, just being consistent, continue to, it can, consistent to you might look like a song every two months, every three months, you know, every six months. It just depends on you. Like I said, music is expensive, so I'm not going to tell anyone to go and release songs every two weeks, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. So what makes a great gospel song? What makes it? A great gospel song. Um, yes. Number one, a song that, okay, to me, there's, there's two different types of gospel music. There's one where you are talking to the crowd or, or you're singing along with the crowd like, um, we worship you, almighty God. And then there's one if you're singing to you and Jesus. I worship you, almighty God. So I feel like I prefer the one where you're talking to Jesus because then you can lead everyone. You're included. Like you can, everyone, let's say the person next to me is singing, I worship you. It's more personal. You know, I'm singing, I worship you. He's singing, I worship. That means we're talking to God. So it's personal between God and the person, you know? So I, I love songs like that, to be honest. You know, songs that makes it, you know, it's just you and God. You're singing to you and God. And it encourages others as well to have that personal um, time singing to God. So it's them singing to God. So I love that kind, that type of gospel music. So I think that makes a great gospel music. And um, music that's inspired by the Holy Spirit, you know, that's the word of God. Because when you're singing songs <laughs> that's encouraging your heart, remember that those type of songs mostly are what's in the word of God. You know, like you're the lamp to my feet, just reminding you of how important God is and what he's done for you. So, yeah. All right, well, so where can people find you um, to stay in touch with you? Well, they can find me on um, Instagram, official Esta Adomi. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Esta Adomi Music. Um, yeah, those those two ways are the ways that you can you know, reach me, but I'm also on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Um, I'm actually working with that with my man management pretty soon to have everything organized. So it'll be easier to find me in the future. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, Jen, uh, Sister Esther, for your time, you know, taking us through your journey of being a musician and an artist. And mm -hmm. I hope that God continues to bless your ministry and guide you in this journey. Amen, amen. Thank you.